welcome to today's tutorial. So we are going to be doing a realistic eye in black and grey. Um, I've got a pound of flesh, the picture of the eyes already, which I've printed out. Um, I've done like a, a lighter version so I can see what's going on a bit more and then obviously the main picture. I always have like a lighter version to help me uh, see where the blacks are and just give me a better idea of what's going on in the different layers and then obviously as the tattoo gets further on I then tend to start more working with the picture um, that hasn't been adjusted. So we've got that all stenciled and ready which was an absolute nightmare. Um, I did find though when the stencil was on and I was pressing it down, I did squirt over the top with a bit of green soap and rubbed it in. Now I do that normally with stencils on the skin. If if I'm pulling it back and a little bit's missing, um, I rub the green soap on and it just translates the stencil a bit better, which with these, it's really hard to get the stencil on or dark. So I'm quite happy with that. There's only a few bits that are a little bit light but we can work with. Um, I've got my grey wash set out, uh, the same as usual, dynamic black, uh, world famous legendary black for the deep black areas, and then the grey wash which I mix myself. Uh, you can watch that in other videos on how to make it, but it's extra dark, dark, medium, light and extra light. Now I don't use them all, some of them will be just to water between, especially the extra light. Normally that's just in some areas of blending. And then my setup of needles. I've got a standard uh, three round liner, um, nine mag, 19 mag for the big areas, and a 14 round shader which is most important normally for me uh, just to get get that detail and get it a little bit more um, more than a lot of just shaded tattoos um, they're all killer ink needles um, and that's what I tend to use, I really like them um, I do use other needles but they're my preferred setup kind of any brand they're pretty much similar nowadays, they all probably come from the same place. There is a few slightly different, um, but they're good for the quality and an alright price. I'm using an Injector Nano machine. I've always used that, I've tried a few, uh, but for me and black and grey tattoos, these are absolutely perfect. I don't think I'd ever use anything different. I get all my machines from there. And yeah, just Vaseline, green soap, some paper towels and we're ready to go. So I'm gonna run you through from start to finish. Um, and obviously fast forward the boring parts. But yeah, you'll get to see how I build it up from the start and a few tips and tricks along the way. If these videos are helping, uh, please subscribe, share them, do whatever, whatever you do. Uh, this is just a hobby on the side for me, but I'm finding it really fun. And the amount of positive feedback has been amazing. So thank you to everyone watching and I hope you enjoy. Right, we're going to use the liner first, uh, just to get the basic markings and get some kind of permanent stencil on the go and then we can really start putting in some details. There isn't many lines in this really, so I'm mainly going to be doing like the eyelashes and just wherever I can, not even line it fully, just mark in a few areas. 
Um, I'm currently on like 11.3 volts. Um, I don't really differ from that. If there's a bit that's a little bit awkward, I might I might go a few volts different, but I tend to just stay around them. Now, as you can tell, I'm not fully committing to these lines, and it's more just of a and marking and the reason being I don't want them to be so harsh um, or definitely not too thick my aim is always to build on top of stuff as much as I can um, so I can get things how I want them and that's the same when I'm tattooing on real skin
Right, now we've got the lines temped in. Um, that's the eyelashes done for now, but a lot of them are just very subtly put in um, and marked in. So at some point we will be coming back in to thicken up some parts. I just don't want all the eyelashes um, to be the same thickness. So I'm just trying to get everything on as much as I can, almost like a permanent stencil. Um, then it makes it a lot clearer for me to see where to build details on from there. And that's what I'm gonna do now with the shading as well. Um, I'm just gonna lower the bolts down a couple. And I'm gonna start off with just some light tones, uh, just to build up, um, just to build up the shape of the eye. And then it makes it a lot more clear for when I come to put in blends and air textures. Now as you can see, <coughs> I'm just being really cautious on the shades at the moment and I'm only uh, kind of going one direction with the way that I'm shading and that's just so I can build like a really base layer um, and then I will be able to work over the top of it again and that's, that's always what I aim to do is to do the tattoo in a way that I can build on top of the shades rather than doing one piece at a time. Uh, things get too dark, too complicated and sometimes you can overwork the skin. If you can master the way of building upon the shades on the skin, um, that's when you can really start getting a lot of depth and layers into it and having it a lot more saturated. Now what I don't want to do is work too much with the light um, because I won't be able to build on top of that. So it's more just getting that real basic um, shading that leaves it a lot more permanent. Now what I don't want to do when I'm doing these shades is shade anywhere with the light tone that's possibly going to be black um, <clears throat> and that's because anywhere that is going to be black should be shaded black straight from the get go so like the centre of the eye maybe in the corners of here or anywhere that's going to be really dark it's more just getting the medium light tones that you can build on and get them in 
Um, so for example up here <clears throat> I'm not going to go right up to where the dark is uh, to put to put that temporary shade I'm going to start a little bit further down Now, as you can see, it's starting already to bring the eye out and give it some shape. And that's what I'm aiming for. So now, when, I, when I'm looking at the, at the stencil, there's only a few parts where I want to get it more on there, especially around this part of the eye, which I'm gonna start building up straight away with some detail. So I don't really want to go much near that. Um, but try and get more of a shape there and then now I can clearly see where I can start building layers and putting textures and details. It's just getting that first um, subtle layer that you can build on. So the next step will be a couple more building up parts and then probably some black in the areas. And like I've said, I'm not sure if you've seen any other videos, but each time um, I always try and keep the same process. Um, and that's not with doing every tattoo the same, but just in the same way. So that way, every single time, I know what I'm doing straight away, I know where I'm starting, and then that's where you can really improve. I feel like if you went about each tattoo a different way, it makes it very hard um, to know where to progress. And this way, it keeps the stencil, um, you get a nice tattoo that then you can build and put skill into. But this is just getting that layer, then it's me starting the tattoo once it's all there. So we've now got the round shader. Um, I'm kind of still in, I'm, I'm at like the medium shades now. Because um, the bits that I'm working on, they're not dark, but they are a lot darker than just the light shades. So we've got a medium and I'm just still temping in some of the areas before I really start going on the piece. I haven't got the needle that far out. It is like a liner if you have it too far out and it can put it in really solid so you have to be so careful. The way I do the shading is more just cross hatching on the surface um, and that way you're building it up in stages. And with the shades that I'm using, because it's mixed from black, it goes straight in like it's a black, even the shades. I'm just skimming the surface here but because it's with a medium grey which are quite dark because I've mixed them myself um, the will leave a lot of ink there I always try and think when I'm tattooing how the needles are working and how many passes you're going over and along those kind of lines. Now if I've rubbed and rubbed at these greys, um, you're not going to be able to tell what you've used, how it will heal, um, whereas if you're cross hatching it you know exactly what shade you've done, you know how many times you've been over it and you know how much you work in the skin.
Now you can see here um, where I've almost lined the dark area and then as it comes across I didn't and that's because on this side it fades that way and on this side it then becomes blurry so I've left that for the round shader um, just to mark in rather than the liner and I think even if you have to take a break for a while and just figure out where on the picture you want the lines where you want things more blurry um, I've been doing it a very long time and no and I, and I do sit down beforehand and look at the picture and almost plan it in my head where I'm going to be do certain things um, so with some of the eyelashes they might be blurry so I'll do them with a round shader um, the eyebrow for instance I haven't even touched that with the liner and that's because a lot of it is blurry and a lot bigger um, hairs so I've left that and I'll do most of that with a round shader and then probably come in with a liner just to tighten areas up uh, there you have it so far that's the start it's all tempting, in ready now to put some layers and textures Okay, let's start building up um, some details. So I'm back in with the liner again. And I'm just going to get this reflection um, put in properly. Now I'm looking at the really light photo and that's just um, picking out the bits that are black. You can see here it's not quite black but it's just just under um, on the top of there. So them bits will be like I will put them in probably the same and that's just from the black but more shaded. 
and then in these bits of the areas that are black I'm going to solidly put them in now as well. So small little circles for the black and just dabbing as we're going. And I'm just dabbing so I don't smudge the stencil. Um, Now don't worry too much about getting right up to the edges when you're doing this as well with the black areas. Um, my main goal here is to just keep building um, the image up on layers. So getting up to the edges is like final stages and bits that I can be really picky at. It's really hard to do at the start because you just want to go over and get things right to the corners but by doing that it'll make the stencil uh, less clear and it'll make it harder for yourself now as I'm starting to come further round on the eye in this part here and over here I won't be going as deep with the black and I'll, I'll be a lot more loose with how I colour it and that's because on the picture it isn't solid there and that's where it blends into the greys so I want to almost start by um, blending it out now and that's just rather than having the needle so sunk in and colouring like this I then start more just peppering it in on the top and that's just so I can give it um, more layers in the cross hatch so as you can see there when I wipe it's like a spray of dots and that gives it a lot more better chance when it comes to blending the, the greys up into it for the video I'm really trying to keep out the way here and tattooing it at just one angle um, but if it wasn't for showing on the tutorial I think I would be turning it quite a lot to get the right angles I need um, to make it easier for myself I like going like a certain direction with the needles um, so for me now I do prefer almost to flick it that way especially when I'm tattooing on skin and I think that just comes with preference as to how you want to do it the fake skin is also really tough um, so it does make it a little bit different it is it, it's quite different to get used to but um, the basics are all still the same and it is very good for practicing on So I'm trying to blend it out as much as I can now with the blacks and not go so solid um, as I start now blending it in.
Now the reason I've got so little lines is the less lines you can and um, the more almost blended and blurred look that's the more realistic it will look. So I've only lined what I really need to in the picture and then at the end I can come in and sharpen it as much as I please. So I'm now going into the dark greys, not the black anymore. And I'm just building up that part under the eye to give the fold. I think what helps me as well is almost shading the direction um, that you go in and how the image is. So, I do cross hatch it but I'm also going this direction because that's the way that the shades are going um, so if it does leave any marks at least they go in the right direction
Okay, so I'm now working on this circular bit of the eye and the textures that I want to put in, uh, which are kind of one of the most important parts. Um, what I'm doing is I'm going to swap between the round shader and the liner just to really get them details. Um, but I'm trying not, I'm not going to go too dark. I'm going to go for probably a medium and then when I can shade over the top just to soften it in um, obviously it will get darker so I'm using the round shader just to get them really fine um, shades and keep it um, nice and detailed first And like I said before, I'm shading in the same direction as the details and as the shades. And I'm not going too harsh, I'm literally just um, building up the shades and just peppering it in on the top there. So while I'm doing this, um, there's parts where that I want a bit darker, I will go slightly deeper and then gradually come off a bit softer like that and then deeper and that's just creating me uh, different shades.
Okay, let's get a few shades blended down, uh, a bit more solid, and then we can start working on the eyebrow, and then we have like a real base then to start getting some really fun details in and stuff. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going over and um, kind of deepening the shades and blending parts out. As you can see here, um, some of these shades don't come far down enough. We've got the base there, but now I can really start working at some of the parts that will give it a lot more depth and make it a lot more 3D. So like under the, under the eyelid and then probably a bit more in here, then I'll start getting that eyebrow in. The, uh, the pupil still needs quite a lot of work. Um, but that's going to be more when I get a lot of details in. That'll start going back over into them parts. So the parts that I'm working on now, you can see um, just as I'm working up to where the crease is of where the eye sits in, um, I didn't line this bit, it was shaded and now I'm really starting to see um, kind of what I was aiming for when I didn't line it because um, it does have an edge but with the shades blending out this direction and that direction um, as the needle skims over it kind of blends the two together and it makes that um, it makes that edge a lot more darker as I'm hitting over it and that kind of builds it up to be how I want it rather than just putting a line in then trying to fade it off from there um, if I'd aligned that part it would have been really easy to overwork it whereas at the moment I'm kind of still building up and I think that's just thinking about um, what you're going to do and in, in which order
Okay, so next part is the eyebrow. So what I'm going to do to start off with is with the round shader, <clears throat> I'm going to start building um, some of the base lines into the into the eyebrow. Now it isn't um, really clear. It's it gets a little bit more blurry as it comes over here and more fluffy. So that's why I'm not going to use the liner to start off with. Now, as you can see on the picture over here, it is more lines, but to build this base in uh, and to get it how I want it, I'm going to start off with the round shader, then I'm going to build and get it more deeper with the mag. Just like how I've done a lot of these parts with the top of here, I've kind of put the base in, then built on top of that. So I'm going to use like uh, still um, a dark wash, to get it in uh, and tempt in but I'm not gonna go so hard I'm just gonna kind of build in the lines that are well they're not lines but build in um, where I want the base with the lines then go over with the mag Now it is going to look quite random to start off with um, but I think you've just got to trust um, the building of it and doing it in the correct order. So keep it nice and loose, you want this to be like really blurry. And just keep adjusting your depth, um, so you can almost go in quite light to make it more blurry and pushing a little bit harder where you feel um, to get more of it on there. Now we've got a little bit of the base there, I'm going to go in with the mag, uh, more with the medium now, and I'm kind of just going to build upon what I've already put there, um, and then kind of swap between the two until I feel like it's right. And what I'm doing is, kind of shading in between the lines that I've put in and then deepening on the areas that I've already shaded and that'll just kind of blend them and make them a bit more blurry Mm-hmm. 
So what I recommend when, when you're doing this is to slowly dab away and that way you'll see you'll see where it's kind of coming away and you can build on it as it's coming away um, rather than just wipe it fully um, it'll almost pull too much off and you won't be able to build on it that well and that's the same when I'm tattooing it on skin I never really wipe it fully um, I'll just dab away and build on it until it's right until um, well definitely until I can wipe it and it still be there at least So what I'm doing now is I've got the mag just right on its side and I'm almost using it as a liner um, and it'll just give me that very fine hair strokes So once you're at a stage where it's starting to look a bit more how you want it to, uh, just slowly keep working over and over until it's built up and it's enough and how you want it. So I'm going to sw keep swapping between the two and just dabbing away and then when it's at the point which is near enough now I can start giving it a nice wipe and it will reveal what's underneath and where you want to work more on. But don't go too harsh with it. Uh, just remember to just softly build it. Um, but not with too light of a shade either. Just a medium. At the very least. I'm using a dark here. And I'm swapping in between a dark and a medium. And then as I wipe, bits will disappear and it'll come a little bit lighter. But I can uh, work and saturate it to get it to how I want it to be. I definitely wouldn't go in with a black or anything too dark. Because um, it just won't give the right effect. It's just slowly building up, nice and blurry.
and just trust that you're doing it right as well because there's a lot of moments um, as you're doing it and it won't feel or look right but just trust um, the process and getting it blurry Try and, try and um, keep to the picture as much as you can but with a lot of stuff like this it doesn't matter if you go a little bit different as long as the effect is the same but there's parts in here where the hairs will be slightly different um, and that's not too much of a worry the main thing that I'm going for here is getting the right effect um, the hairs can change and flow a little bit different and that's fine. Also bear in mind that you want you want to shade the direction like I've mentioned before in this video and in previous videos you want the shade to go in the direction that you're going so you don't want to be shading that way as much as you do this way and that's just the direction that the hairs go in as you can see it's getting a little bit more like how I want it to be So now that I've got to where I want to be, um, I'm going to start blending up just so I feel like they worked on the same layer. Um, then I can come back into the eyebrow with the round shader.
now that everything's where we want it to be and it's all on there what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go over any bits that I want darkened uh, finish blending any areas as you can see there's still a bit in here that I want to um, add more grey and even in the eyebrow just more deepen the shades but the whole base of it's on there now and the pupil I want to go in add details and then I can just really pick away at bits now and have fun with it and there's no stress because the, st the stencil's all pretty much on there there's nothing left to uh, kind of add in it's more just building on top of what I've got already now and enjoying it now if this tattoo was on like a real person um, this is kind of how I want to get it to be and depending on the skin how it's looking um, it takes easier and different on difference of people and different skin types so that would depend on what I would do to it um, afterwards So what it's about now is just deepening the shades and adding details.
Right, now we're at a point where uh, we're happy with how it looks and we've got some details and stuff in. It's now time to put the white highlights in. So with a piece like this, I want the white in the middle of the eye really, really prominent and wherever I can get to kind of make it look wet and more realistic. Um, the white should hopefully uh, make it pop. Now on the, on the fake skin, it's not as good as tattooing like real skin so it's not as prominent um, but for me as well when I'm tattooing on real skin the white really helps break up the black areas as well and stops it from like merging together so parts like in the middle of the eye and stuff that's where I really want to get in between those eyelashes and get a nice bit of like a white highlight going on And then what we're going to do here, rather than uh, really uh, line it harsh, is I'm kind of just shading with the white. Um, and just layering it in. And that'll give it that kind of wet look. And it'll turn it an actual grey. And it'll just give us some, uh, kind of like another layer to it. and also it will really bring out that shade that's just um, around the black area as well. Now I do kind of like to almost dot it in with the white just so it goes in like as good as possible You can see here as well, I'm just almost shading it in as well. And that's because I don't want it too prominent, I just want it to be really subtle there. And where the eye kind of rolls in, it'll just give it that more 3D effect. And you can almost stipple it just to be subtly there.
And there we have it. That is our eye complete. Now I can come back to bits if I feel like I need to, because it's on fake skin. Um, it's really hard actually to get the shades uh, fully saturated. Um, on actual skin I feel like this would take me half the time and go in a lot easier. The shades are really, really slow to build up. Um, so that is something to be wary of starting these. I feel like every time I want to go smaller and smaller with the tattoo because they take so long. Um, I think this has took me around seven, eight hours. Whereas if I was tattooing it on a person, it would probably be like four. So, but there you have it. Um, let us know what you think in the comments. And if there's anything that you want me to do a tutorial on, please let me know. Um, and yeah, let me know how you get along. If you do decide to do an eye, please let me know how it goes. Uh, send me a picture or send me the link so I can have a look. But yeah, please subscribe if you do, uh, if these videos do help you. And yeah, thanks for watching.